Well, friends, a lot has happened since we last met as a congregation. I wish I could see all of you in person. Uh, I'm thinking of you, praying for you, and uh, my plan and hope is to connect with, with all of you in the coming week by phone. I was not able to do much of any of that in the last couple of weeks, actually. As, as many of you know, I was, I was uh, dealing with some sickness myself for the first week there, but this whole past week, when I was feeling healthier, uh, Ruth got very sick. It's been a very long, difficult week, and it wasn't until Thursday we found out what she was dealing with as they diagnosed her with, with a ruptured appendix. So uh, there was an emergency surgery uh, that same night. So we are uh, only now becoming aware, beginning to realize how dangerous this was for her, and we are so thankful to God for her recovery that she's doing well to this point and, and, and uh, recovery to go, but she's, she's, uh, she's doing well. And we, we are so thankful to you, to all of you who have been praying, praying for her, praying for us, and, and uh, thank you so much. Your prayers have been effective. Now here we are as a church, and we are isolated. So this is my first attempt uh, at this whole business of how, how to do church. How do we do church uh, in an age when we can't meet person to person and, and as, as a collective group? So we're starting out simple, just a, sort of a greeting, a meditation today, uh, get you thinking about a few things that will hopefully be helpful, and then maybe we'll expand that, do a prayer session with, with uh, John next week uh, as well, and, and uh, perhaps... We'll have a full-length sermon one of these weeks, maybe get back to the, the Gospel of Luke, uh, as we were doing before, if, if it seems appropriate. Um, but all that, I'll have a better idea of, of how to approach things and what we should do or try to do based on, on uh, our conversations as we kind of gather what the needs are of, of our congregation in the, in the coming week. We may try to incorporate some music down the road. Uh, it sort of to give you this, give you the feel of a Sunday morning worship as much as possible in, in, in what, what we're used to, and that's part of why I'm doing it here with the, the background that we have. But in the meantime, I'd just encourage you to find some good worship music to listen to and take, take some time on this Sunday to, to commune with the Lord and, and honor Him with your time, with your heart and mind. Spend time in the presence of God. Now, my daughter called uh, one day this, this past week. She called during the workday, but not from her workplace, rather from home. And so it caught my attention. I thought, something's got to be wrong. And she told me that she, they had been sent home from work because a computer hacker had, had uh, hijacked their company network and was holding it for ransom. So they couldn't work. Very, very strange thing. And, and uh, the word surreal came to mind as we talked about it, uh, by which we mean bizarre, where things are not normal at all. It's sort of a dream state, things happening in real life that normally only happen in your dreams that are, are illogical or, or uh, out of the ordinary and unlikely and just don't make sense. And it, it can be um, very, very uh, difficult to process when that happens. So right now, uh, they're, they're getting back to normal. She's working again, although odd hours, but, but the, the 50 to 100, I'm not sure how many people work at that workplace, they have now shared this surreal experience they have in common, and they will going forward. I remember that surreal feeling well from April of 1997 when, we, when I was packing up the family and, and, and we were leaving Grand Forks, North Dakota, and, and as we left our house, we could see the floodwaters coming down the streets toward our house from, from the north and from the east, both at the same time. And it was this bright, sunny, uh, cheerful day, birds chirping cheerfully at least, not cheerful for us. And we could see the plumes of smoke rising from the northeast as, as downtown Grand Forks burned. So flood and fire at the same time. That was surreal. And we shared that experience and still, still can whenever we encounter one of those 50,000 some people who, who also evacuated when we did. Now here we are today. You sit at home, uh, you watch the news about the coronavirus, and it is a surreal experience, isn't it? And it's one that's shared 
by every person on this planet. We have this experience in common. We're all wondering, where is this going? Will it all blow over within weeks and, and things get back to normal, or is it going to get really hard, really bad, and will it, it, it affect, impact us personally? Will there be a new reality if and when this is all finished? Will there be a new reality where the world is never again the same as it was before? So we are fearful. You may feel very alone these days. But truth is, we share this experience. We share it uh, with our families. We share it as a church family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Struggle together, process what's happening in the world. Hopefully you've been talking to each other during the course of these weeks. Um, and so I want you to remember that we chose to call our church body Living Hope. Why do we pick that particular name? Right now, this is the time when that choice of names will be put to the test. Do we have a living hope? What is it? Or should I say, who is it? So with that background, thinking about who it is, let me give you this thought. And, and I usually, usually I'll say on Sunday morning, let me give you this thought to take home with you this week. And uh, you're at home already. So let me give you this thought just to take to heart this week. Now, I spend way too much time looking at these stained glass windows behind me because I'll come in here to pray. And, and, and oftentimes we'll just sit and I'll be thinking about the imagery of these windows, which we can't see very well right now. I'm sorry about that, but there, there's so much sunshine out today that it's just backlit and, and therefore blurry. All this is thing, uh, are the kinds of things we need to work on. But if you haven't thought about those windows in a while, you know, I've written a sermon series we did on this. I've used them as a teaching tool multiple times. And I want to encourage you right now today to take a fresh look at, using your imagination, of course, you can't see them, but a fresh look at the scroll on the left and, and the, I'm doing something that, that weather people do with ease, but for me it's very hard because I'm, I'm looking in, not a mirror, okay, not a mirror, but the scroll and... <laughs> There it is, the book, okay? Scroll and book, scroll and book. Gonna have to practice this a lot more. So on the scroll, there are uh, two letters, you know, two Hebrew letters. So you go, you read from right to left in Hebrew and, and the letters are Aleph Lamed, which which spell out the simplest, the, the, Hebrew, the Hebrew words, very simplest, most basic name for God. And on the book, we have uh, two uh, Greek letters, and they are capital Greek letters, but they're Alpha and Omega, which are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So what is the significance of this scroll and this book, thinking about God and thinking about the Alpha and the Omega? Isaiah 44, verse 6 this is what the Lord says. Israel's king and redeemer, the Lord Almighty, he says, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. And then Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty. This speaks of God from whom light comes streaming down to us, from whom all blessings flow. This God who is from age to age the same. When everything changes, when all around us is, is gives away or seems to come crashing down on us, there's so much uncertainty or so it feels to us. God is the one constant. He calls us to recognize him in this day and, and to come near to him. You know that God loves you. You know that God wants to commune with you through a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ, the one who died for you. 
Nothing has changed in that regard. Coronavirus, yes. But the most basic eternal truths of God, his son, his love toward us, has not changed and never will. This God will give you strength for this day because every day is in his hand from the first to the last and every day in between, including today. Please rest in this thought. We'll be in touch in the coming days. And my prayer is that as I communicate with you and you with me and, and all of us with each other, that we may find mutual encouragement by God's spirit. Let's pray. Lord, we are struggling as individuals this day, these days. Uh, we're struggling as a church. We're struggling as a nation and as a whole world of people. Struggling, uncertain. All of life has become surreal. Teach us, Lord, to trust you. Teach us to trust you once again. Remind us that you, God, who did not spare your own son, but gave Jesus for us, that you will certainly provide for all our needs in Christ Jesus today. Amen. Now, friends, receive this blessing. Take this blessing to heart. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. We'll be in touch.